The current economic meltdown recalls the fiscal crisis of the 1970s, when the city was on the brink of bankruptcy. Wall Street investment banker Felix Roten is credited with playing a key role in saving the city from catastrophe during those dark days. I met with Mr. Roten at his office and spoke with him about then and now. Mr. Roten, do you see any parallels between uh, the crisis that the city faced back in 1975 and the crisis it's facing today? In both cases, there was a lack of knowledge about what this was all about. Uh, I mean, as far as the, the New York City figures in, in 74-5, we had, I mean, we thought we knew, but we, the numbers were totally meaningless. Mm -hmm. And then when the banks stopped lending to the city, uh, we had about uh, a couple of months to begin to put together a plan that would enable us to avoid bankruptcy. So we were scurrying around to mm -hmm. figure out a plan that would also ultimately enable us to raise a billion dollars a month for about eight months when we had zero access to the markets. It's kind of eerily, you know, sometimes I look at newspapers today and I see, well, you know, there's eight jillions of derivatives and there's yeah. so many <laughs> trillions of something else. And this is, uh, at least we, we, we had wrong numbers, but there were numbers now. <laughs> no, no, we have no what idea are. what we have out there. But the spirit of the city was very different. I mean, now, the, as I see the or as I sort of feel the spirit of the city, is people are really, really nervous. People are really concerned. And they weren't that way in 75? They were, they were kind of angry, but they weren't all that. I mean, they, nobody, I, nobody thought we were going to go bankrupt, although we, people were concerned about it, but it, it, didn't, it didn't really have a meaning. Also, we had banks. We had New York City banks in 1975. Today, we have a couple of global banks mm -hmm whose main concern isn't so much New York City as it is the global economy, which is understandable because they're so involved in it. But we had, new, even though Citibank, uh, Chase, uh, Manny Haney, I mean, they were, they were very big banks, but their main interest was New York, with the New York City, right. New York State. And their CEOs were very much involved in the, in the business and the social life of the city. Today, the chairman of the big banks, they're, they're global executives, and they have, they have a different outlook on life, I think. What lessons can we learn from that experience today? That you're really at the mercy of the information that is given to you, and that, uh, that you, have to, you have to really work at, at, at getting, getting facts that are accurate. Uh, in addition, you have, to, you have to try to get competing groups to work together. I mean, we had labor and, and the banks and the banking community working together. Nobody could have predicted that. So it seems like one of the biggest differences between now and 75 is that much of the solutions are going to come from outside. Absolutely. Well, today where we're at is that the solutions, the present plan actually came, came from Great Britain. That's right which is good for them, good for us, but I mean, and, and we have an agreement with, I don't know, 15, 20 countries all over the world that came together on a very complicated set of issues. Uh, I think that's completely unique. I and mean, that's the kind of cooperation in a local level that you saw back in 75. Yes, but we weren't able, we, we, could, we were able to do that within, to some extent, yeah. within the groups in the city. But when we would go down to Washington and try to get congressional delegations from other states to support us, it was like pulling teeth. Now, regardless of what steps are taken, internationally, nationally, or locally, what kind of uh, sacrifices do you think New Yorkers are bound to experience in the next year or so? Well, I mean, it's not only New Yorkers. I mean, I think the whole country is going to have to really seriously sacrifice because... Uh, Things will be, I, th I think we're going into a, a difficult recession. I think we're going to have to cut back on our using uh, big automobiles, on, on consumption. On, on, we have to invest more. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think prices are going to be difficult to keep down. I think we have to be careful about inflation because mm -hmm. of these big deficits that are going to be running. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are sort of the, the you know, the, 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 the tail at the end of the yeah, dog. Yeah. And, uh, and before that, we have the Federal Reserve, we have the State of New York, we have the United States Congress, we have, and we have the UN, we have the world. Uh, and we have big players in the world today. We have the Chinese, we have the Indians, we have a 
number of wars in the Middle East. We, 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 countries like Brazil are beginning to be big competitors. You know, but one of the, one of the things that was done in the 70s that people say, Man, maybe we shouldn't have done that, was cut services so extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, did it hurt the city to some degree in the long term? Yeah. Do you foresee th those kinds of cuts in services this time around? I wouldn't think so, um, because I think we have more more control over this over this process. Uh, the city cut services because they didn't know where to cut efficiently, so they cut across the board. But uh, I don't think we'll face that. Uh, what the country faces in terms of unemployment, for instance, uh, is going to surprise people. I think. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to be very difficult. I think the more difficulties we face, the more it's important to have people understand why that's happening. Because especially if you ask people to sacrifice and to accept less or whatever, the more important it is for them to understand why that's happening and what what they can expect. What are the signs that we should be looking out for? That will tell us we're turning the corner. That things are getting better. I think you will see it in the economy of the cities, in the volume of international trade. Uh, you will see it in the in the reaction of the financial community, the banks, to requests for loans. So one last impossible question, Mr. Roden: When are we going to begin to see those signs? Well, we may never see those signs, but if we do, <laughs> I would hope it would be within two or three years. Two or three years. But the best we can hope for. It's not a guarantee. <laughs> okay.